cut us off. We're live, though. Look at my smile. <laughs> Travis looks like he's a little happy, too. I hope they can hear us. I don't know. They, can, they hear can hear us. They can hear us. They just can't see. Yeah, they us. can't see us right now. So, hey, welcome to. Uh, this this is know. kind of addicted to film. Wait, will you? Yeah, I get guess, excited, man. man. What's yeah, wrong well. with you? Oh, what? Well, oh, 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 oh my god! <laughs> oh man, no, this is funny. But uh, Mike oh, Phillips, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> ooh, oh, that's oh, like a tease. Oh, uh, they're playing with us. They're oh, playing with us, man. You know all. How this? are you doing, Tim? Hey! There we are. Yeah, it looks We're like back. us. All right, everybody, welcome to episode 19 of Addicted to Film. That is, man right there is Travis Hobson. I've, I've lost track of the numbers. I'm actually surprised that you've been able to keep up with it. Are we Are we counting the ones where we weren't here? And I'm Tim Gordon. Um, and that's we Tim have Gordon. a we have a we have a fantastic show coming Do up we? today. Um, I have no clue what we're doing. I never know because I'm not in charge of clip construction. So Travis Hobson, from time to time, that's my will, official title. Will throw all Clip sorts of stuff on the show. Well, Travis, what 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 are we doing on today's show? Since I don't know. Well, the first, well, you actually do know. The first thing we are <laughs> we're going to do is I'm going to issue an apology to our fans. Both. No, of I'm them. not issuing an apology no, for it's that. Not, no, I'm not. No, I am I know not issuing. Not. Look, let me look into to. the camera. Look, it's a it's it's I it's, am not issuing it's a apology personal for apology. That. apology. Because the number one movie in the country right now is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, much to most people's surprise. Um, and normally what we would do is sh- run a clip of the movie and then him and I would kick it around and talk about it for a few minutes. Mm. But the problem with that this week is that only one of us bothered to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, the other person decided that he was too good for it and did not want to go see it. So... Yeah, so so what we are going to actually get... First of all, man, why did you feel like you were too good to go see it? Yeah, right. Now, it's you, obviously, who did not want to go see Teenage Shooting Ninja Turtles giving me some lame excuse like you don't know nothing about them. Yeah, you don't man. know nothing about nothing until no, you see it. Basically, let me, let me just share with the audience. I'm a grown-ass man. Oh, oh, but right. nobody else is. And I am not going to see a movie with some demonic talking turtles. I didn't they're see not, the first one. Not demonic. I didn't see the second one. You didn't know. I think Megan Fox has short fingernail beards. They irritate me. I don't know what the hell that she means. She can't act. What what was there to see? What well, didn't it do what? like 17% on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, I don't know where it's at right now. <laughs> oh, you but I'm but up. I'm close though, right? I don't know, maybe. But uh, uh, but the thing is, the thing is you didn't know Jack about Iron Man before you saw it. Yeah, what, I did. Would you know? I knew that Robert Downey Jr. was playing it. Who cares? So I mean, so the thing <laughs> you didn't care, nobody cared about Robert Downey Jr. then. So 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 you it, it, it's it's totally subjective. Nineteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, nineteen percent. One of mine is one of the the nineteen percent that's that's in favor of it. So so what you're going to get is we're going to play a clip of of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles right now, and I'm going to give you my my nickel review of it, and then we're going to move on. So let's go ahead and play that clip. <laughs> Quietly. If Master Splinter catches us, he'll send us back to the Hashi. I ain't going back to the Hashi. Every time we're in the Hashi, it's because of you. Well, bro, you won't have to worry about me dragging you down anymore. What's that supposed to mean? I'm going out on my own. First chance I get. How are we gonna finish our hip hop Christmas album, bro? You're the hype man. Yo, yes. Say, shut up. Say, shut up. 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 Shut Texted me and okay. said, tell Travis right. BB oh is on big delay that's because big, of golf. That's, that's a big brother update. That's for reality TV junkies. Oh, I didn't know what BB was, yeah, man. That's, but, that's, but why do your people text me? Because they don't know. Because I don't give away my number. <laughs> wow. Uh, you, you know who you are out there. You heard it. Travis says he doesn't give his number out. I don't. But go ahead. All right. So what's up with this Teenage Mutant? Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right, so it's yeah. produced by Michael Bay. So everybody knows this thing is going to be huge. You mean it's the Michael be... Bay that did Transformers? Yeah, and it looks, if you just saw it, it looks like Transformers, too. Oh. It's big like Transformers. Right. It, it's directed by Jonathan Liebsman, who did right. Clash, uh, Wrath of the Titans, and he also did uh, Battle Los Angeles. Right. The two movies I generally like, for the most part. Um, they're just big action movies. Age and, and divide. That. 
Yeah, I mean, she's fine. <laughs> but uh, but the movie, I mean, the thing about this movie is that most people were scared of it because, one, it's Michael Bay producing it. Yes. But, two, when it started, they had this really dumbass plan to make them, like, extraterrestrials, which is, like, goes totally against everything that's a trans... Uh, you mean the Turtles? The Ninja Turtles. It goes everything against the Ninja Turtles. So it was it was just a really bad idea. So they went and they retooled it. They came back with this version they have now, which, to me, at least is a fairly faithful version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The dynamic between the four is there. You have Raphael, who's the, kind of the hothead, Leonardo, the, the, the leader, Michelangelo, who's kind of the, the goof-off, and then Donatello, who's the nerd. Um, and then they have Megan, Megan Fox as April O'Neil, and I'm, I'm not like you. I actually think she's okay. She's more than just a pretty face, in my opinion. She's, she's a halfway decent actress sometimes. You liked her in uh, that, that, that movie we saw, Friends with Kids. You thought she was good in that. Yes. Okay, so she's not all bad. <laughs> and she's, she's perfectly fine here as April O'Neil. She's not given much to do. But for the most part, this story revolves around uh, April O'Neil discovering uh, the Foot Clan led by Shredder. They're terrorizing the city. Um, and she learns that the guy who her father used to work with, played by William Fitchner, uh, is involved with the Foot Clan. Uh, but she also discovers that there are these ninjas, giant ninja turtles who are fighting back against them as vigilantes. So it's, it's fairly faithful to what we remember from the 1989 Ninja Turtles movie, only writ much larger. The special effects are much better. Uh, the action is, is fairly intense, and it's kind of a funny movie, but I also believe that it's made specifically for kids. Uh, it's co-produced by Nickelodeon, and you can tell uh, just by the style of the humor and and the, the the kind of uh, I would say haphazard attention to detail makes me believe that this was written for kids and not adults. But I think that people who come into this worried that Michael Bay is going to ruin their opinion of the Ninja Turtles or ruin their memories of Ninja Turtles, they'll they'll walk out of this movie just fine. So I think it's a I gave it a three out of five on Punch Drunk Critics, and I think it's a it's a decent movie, and people can go check it out. Uh, it made sixty five million bucks its first week, plus another twenty eight internationally and they've already confirmed a sequel for 2016 so there you go there's ninja turtles for you how are you doing today sir <laughs> i'm actually sick why i mean i mean again people vote with their dollars right um but also dollars you know movies are more expensive than they were say 15 20 years ago or 30 years ago right so I gotta kind of take it with a grain of salt. I mean, sixty-five million is sixty-five million domestically, but it's not like the sixty-five million of like twenty years ago or the sixty-five million of thirty years ago. So it's sixty-five million dollars. Um, congratulations to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, you'll have a one-week run as the number one movie because you definitely won't be the number one movie next week. And it also shows. The Expendables. The Expendables it also showed, and, and what I thought was one of the worst opening weekends i'm talking about as it relates to films that were opening you know because i i th there was not one film that opened this week that was a huge film that i had any interest in seeing i mean step up all in i was absolutely not going to see that one either because i, I, I still want to go see it oh I, God, I, well. I mean, i've seen them all at this point i might as well yeah, go see I'm it done because i think this is probably going to be the last one I, especially I'm, if stepping, you look at, I'm stepping away especially if you look at what the box office did it didn't do anything yeah. but but then again the thing is the, the step up movies mm -hmm. they're they're like the resident evil movies the Resident Evil movies keep going, and they keep going, keep going, keep going. They're probably the last one's coming up, I think, in, in a year or two. But uh, they keep going. They don't. They're making less money domestically, mm -hmm. but they continue to make a lot of money overseas. And that's the way. Dollars, and that's the way Step Up is. If you look at what it did this week, it made like six million dollars here, but another twenty six million dollars overseas. Oh People God, pay man. around the world to see Step Up. Just nobody in America. Man, I, I'm just, I'm <laughs> which just, is interesting because it was probably one of the most all-American franchises in the beginning. I mean, man, it was Channing Tatum. Sick to my stomach. <laughs> sick to my stomach about this. this Why does this it Ninja bother you so thing. much? Why does it bother you so much? Because, Seriously. man, honestly, um, I understand that there is a huge divide. You know, as I as I age in this business of movies, I really like to see versus the junk that is put out. On a week-to-week -week basis. Can you explain to me, and, and um, this is a serious question, Go ahead. explain to me what the difference is in terms of pop culture to you between what Marvel does and what the Ninja Turtles do? Because they're, no, 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 they're, no, it's no, the no, same, no, it's the no, same no, audience. No, no, let me finish. No, well, I, mean, it's, I can, it's I can explain that one. Okay. Because Marvel and, and what they're doing are based off of comic books that have so been around. Ninja Turtles. 
Okay, well, been around just as long. Okay, yeah. okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's, um, it's why it's why I ask because I'm actually trying see, to I'm, see. And first I'm not, of all, I'm not I would need to, to bring in the smartest comic book guy I know. <laughs> That's me. No, that would be Julian Lytell. I know just as much as Julian. We talk about him no, all the time. No, I, I drove home with I dropped Julian off at his house a couple of nights ago, and Julian gave me a comic education the likes that I. I never would like heard to know before. what this education was. And, and basically, since I talked to you every day, and you never educated me in that way, maybe you're a bad teacher. We of, don't of, talk of, comics. Not like Why that. is that? That's up to you. What, what do you am mean, I supposed what, to do? What, what am I you, supposed you think to, I just walk up to Julian you? and ask him a, a question? What do you want me to teach you about comics? Man. But no, but the thing is, though, first I mean, of it's all, a, this, it's, this a, teenage, it's, a, it's a real question, though. Okay, but wait a minute. But let me let me let me I, answer this. This teenage, you're saying that that that, that Ninja Turtles is a, a successful comic been book around but, since the '80s, right? But what I'm saying is, these Marvel characters have been around since the '50s and '60s. So there's what? That's your rationale. Um, okay, let's start all over again. In the 1980s, when this thing first dropped, I was damn near 30 years old. I had no interest at 30 years old in watching the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I didn't. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying it fell in I'm a just place. Trying to figure it out. It fell in a place in the pop culture where I, I'm not the audience for this movie. I wasn't the audience in 1989. I'm not the audience in 2014. That's real talk. I get that. But and, I'm and trying what I, to And what out. I mean by that, not being the audience. Is not being the audience that even has interest in wanting to check it out. And I love movies, and you know I no, do. What, right. No, I'm not saying that. So but I'm, trying I'm to figure, like, I have I'm no trying, interest. But, but I'm, try, I'm still trying to figure out. So you were into Iron Man before. I, I know was you. In the, I was into Iron Man You're, because I, I love Robert Downey Jr. When I found that he was playing the role, I had interest in seeing Robert Downey Jr. as this character. But I know for a fact there are a ton of movies you've seen that have a, just as long a lineage that you will go see willingly. But you yeah. won't go see this just because mm-hmm. whatever. I, that's why I don't Throwing understand. Throwing shade on it, That's man. why I don't understand it. Throwing that, shade. Not, that, I, I, not I'm even not, I'm remotely, not the, <laughs> remotely I'm not get, interested. I'm not getting the differentiation and between, you know what's between funny? one and the other. If you they're, they're send all, a screener all to my house at the same. end of the year, I probably won't watch it then either. <laughs> well, you ain't got to worry about that. Then I guess the screen yeah, thank God for that. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mike Phillips, man. Yeah, that's right. I have no interest. So, None. so you got your Ninja Turtles review, and now we're going to go and move on to another movie that came out this week. We're going to talk about a movie that has the 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 might, the the power of Oprah Winfrey and Steven Spielberg behind it. How can it not? I know it's just in this one either. How can it not be? But you saw it. Yeah, I did see it. So, so <laughs> it, was, it was it was enough to get you into that. So let's no, go no, ahead no. and show a clip from the Hundred Foot Journey. Do you hear me up there? I say no. Don't try to steal my children. I will report you, Mr. Kadam, for making too much noise. And I will report you for attempted child abduction. Have you even asked the boy what he wants? You deliberately seduce him. You seduce his mind with your awful, tasteless, empty sauces, with your pitiful little squashed bits of garlic. That is called subtlety of flavor. It's called meanness of spirit. If you have a spice, use it. Don't sprinkle it. Spoon it in. But you do not seem to understand that there is such a thing as enough. Enough is enough, arrête. Yes, enough of you. Always up there like a queen or something. You tell him it's classical. What is classical? Classical comes from the word class. Ah. And that is what he will learn in my kitchen. He will learn how to cook with class. Wow. And uh, if you want to know what can I say about this movie? Our producer, uh, Mike Phillips over there, he was having a ball watching that clip. So maybe maybe this movie was geared towards him. Because I, I, I don't know if it was necessarily geared no, towards No, no, me no, no. Let me, let me get my say in because you please. normally would oh, kill please, a please, since, since. All right. Yeah, please. Go well, ahead, This man. movie, of course, is, uh, as you said earlier, produced by both Oprah Winfrey and Steven Spielberg. And it's based on the novel, The 100-Foot Journey, written by Richard Marias. Uh, this film is essentially kind of follows this Indian family mm-hmm. that's over in India. And it's a family that they have their own restaurant there. And I guess the uprising in the country, uh, they lost their restaurant. Was f- they flew, they fleed, excuse me, not flew, but fleed to Europe where they're in the process. And this is France where they end up at. And they... Uh, 
start a restaurant or they buy a restaurant directly across the street from a restaurant owned by Madame Mallory, who's played brilliantly here by Helen Mirren. Yep. Um, Quick question. Yes. Would you still mess with Helen Mirren? Helen Mirren can get it. Okay. She's That's like 60, really she's like 60, whatever. She's <laughs> hot. I had that conversation with somebody <laughs> else the other day. It's like, would you still, would you still oh, get yes. it? Oh, yes. I was like, I yes, like, Helen like, Mirren. Yeah. Yes, like, yeah, probably. And, and if you if you probably. don't if you've never seen young Helen Mirren, you need oh, to Google yeah. that. Oh, no, I've seen. Young Ooh, Helen hot. Mirren. But anyway, back to the story. <laughs> I like her and young Charlotte Rampling. Yeah, she was hot too. Okay, but yeah. moving on. But but the thing that was interesting about this film to me, I, and I'll just kind of sum it up really quickly because I watched it and I I, I thought it was Gary a little peculiar. No, I thought it was peculiar. It, it the story of it essentially boils down to. Assimilate your culture. <laughs> I mean, excuse me. Deny your culture. Assimilate with the mainstream. Cook food and have romance, and it's all good. I, I and, like and, and that's essentially. <laughs> and I sat there. I was like, well, "Really? Yeah. Is, is that okay?" So basically, you know what I'm talking about because you've seen the film. Right. I thought the whole premise that you know I got the the the, the amazing Indian restaurant. You right, got the amazing right. French restaurant. But suddenly, my son is like the LeBron James of cooking. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> he going to come in and take a restaurant well, I, as a one-star restaurant, make it a two-star restaurant, and now he's going to leave that and go for his third star. He, he's like a superstar chef. I, I so, think, but he would let his family restaurant go down to advance. Yeah. I, I but, just okay. thought it was peculiar the way it was presented. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I understand. I don't, I don't necessarily think that the point of the movie was forget your culture and assimilate. <laughs> I think it was learn to uh, learn to adapt and coexist. I think that's what it meant. Because they, by, they, by killing they, his they, own rest, by killing his well, culture's the, the, restaurant, the father didn't do that. The father kept his going just fine. No, nah, I, 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 I didn't get the impression that it was just fine. I, I got the impression a, that it kept where, going. There was a stretch where it. Well, I think it was still okay. We, we, they didn't really go with, into the, it. with the brother cooking. They didn't really go into it though. They didn't really deal. Right. With, they didn't really deal with it, and that's really that's one of my big problems with the movies that they don't really deal with anything. I mean, it's 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 directed by Lasse Hallstrom, who's right. the guy who did Shulk a lot, which is another one of those. He also like, for, did Side for, of House Rules as forgettable well. Forgettable foodie movies, and right. it's like okay, well, whatever, you know. And it's and he, so this is this is exactly the same as Shulk a lot to me in the same way, where they're both they're both really pretty. The food looks great. Right. There's this romance in the middle of it, but it's not ultimately about much of anything. And that's kind of the way I feel about this movie too. But that doesn't mean there aren't good things about it. I mean, I do love Helen Mirren's performance in this. I think she's I great as Mallory. I think her and Ampuri, when they're together, Ampuri plays Papa, the, the Mumbai uh, father. Um, I think when they're together and they're kind of warring against one another, it, the movie's kind of fun. You know, it, it's it's fun in that way. I think where it loses its way for me is when it starts dealing with more serious issues because it doesn't really deal with them. So you have like this, this small little southern villa, this town with this Michelin star restaurant. Mumbai family comes in there, and and the townspeople don't react positively at all. I mean, they're very just, they're racist. Just, they're very racist. They paint yeah. stuff on their on their restaurant. They they uh, they they actually try to burn the place down. Uh, you saw in that clip uh, Hassan, who is the the food prodigy that we were talking about. He's his hands are burned. He gets injured in this thing. And it doesn't really seem to matter. I mean, he just kind of just moves on. Yeah, I'm good. And, and he's like, yeah, I'll just go and work for Madame Mallory right now for a while. But I did kind of like his 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 complicated romance with. No, uh, I, and I did not with, like that. I was waiting okay. for you to bring it up because okay, well, I thought that well, was strange too. Well, not, not with not with Hassan and uh and and Mallory's uh, sous chef played by Charlotte Bone, who I think is gorgeous, by the way. You mean that Charlotte Bone? That Charlotte Bone, yeah. who was who was also in in the terrible Mood Indigo a couple weeks ago by Michelle Gunn. You thought it was terrible? It's not good. But uh, but. Uh, I thought it, I thought the first half of it was good. Uh, all right, but uh, but I like, I <laughs> wow. like I like Charlotte Le Bon a lot, and I, I like the the relationship she has with with Hassan, which begins with him as this stranger in this land and her as the expert. But he's such a natural talent; he begins to surpass her, and it becomes this little bit of a, a jealousy thing involved. He's the there. LeBron James, right? And yeah. I, I kind of like that that complication that gets thrown in there. But but I don't think the movie handles it well because there's scenes where stuff happens, mm -hmm. and you can show the jealousy in a way, but it just came across like awkward. Like right, right. you know, there's this one scene where he's at he's actually at the restaurant and um, Madame Mallory, played by Marin, has put him kind of in charge. Yeah. And she, I guess, is his sous chef. And they, they're kind of going back and forth. And it's like, it's clear that he's the lead. And I'm not saying for you to fall mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. But this whole kind of side eye and bad gazes and 
uh, it, it, it didn't play well to me. It didn't make a lot of sense. No, I, so uh, you understand what I'm saying? I, no, I, I'm I hear saying you. It, it didn't. I hear you. It wasn't as as flawlessly executed as you could have done with with that kind of a romance. And then for them, well, never mind. I'm not going to spoil it. But for for them to go from there to where the relationship eventually goes is kind of yeah, kind of strange. But I also felt like that that tension between them was sort of natural. Also, yeah, but I mean, I, because but, she but was I, she was clearly. She looked like she was sort of the heir apparent before he kind of just strode in there, and right. she was the one who taught him, who basically taught him, gave him the opportunity. Right. So, so, so but and she knew so, he had natural right. talent. So, 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 it's, so it's natural for her to feel right. a little bit of jealousy there between them. And, and I, I could agree with you that 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 little, and it was really more more of an um, montage than anything else, where they're sort of going back and forth between each other, uh, doesn't really work all that great. Mm-hmm. But I did like the scenes when they were together, when she was showing him the ropes a little bit, giving him books and things like that. Meeting him, at, you know, when they were fishing and things like that. I thought those moments were cute. I thought those were nice. What do you think about the film? The, the film overall is pretty forgettable. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It, it's it's perfectly pleasurable. I think there's a lot of scenes where the food looks delicious. Mo- it's not hard to make. This, food this has actually been a really good year for food movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you're between into, Chef, if you're, into, if you're, into, food journey. If you're into food porn, I mean, this is this has been a good year for you. Oh man. But uh, but but it, did I feel the same way about the food as I did in Chef? No. I think I think uh, they're they're handled in two totally different ways. Right. Please stop putting pictures of her up because now you're distracting me. Um, no, no. Well, I have a, I have a I, what I'm doing is I have a Pinterest page that that has like the, the it, well your favorite chicks of the I of call the them year. the hottest honeys of 2014. Yeah. Which I so actually meant to do. She's this making year. the page. I, I she's meant making to do, the page. I meant to do that this year. And I never did, and I'm gonna go back and start one for oh, this go year, ahead, man. I'm glad that I keep inspiring Char- you with great Charlotte. ideas. <laughs> Well, I'll give you credit because you did inspire me to do my own Pinterest page of keeping track of movies. It works out. It does. I'm, it does. I know. I'm kind of kicking your butt this year. But uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, but oh, <laughs> wait, you kicked my butt last year, so it's all good. But uh, year is not they, over yet. It's not over yet. You're right. But uh, but there's there's a section of this movie where I think they really kind of go off course, and that's when Hassan kind of goes into the big city. I think this is where the movie really gets. I really did not like it at, at, at all. Whereas I could sort of enjoy the rest of the movie and you'd be like, eh, it's pleasant. He turns pleasant. into this kind of hardened. Yeah, he gets into the know, big depressed. city. He starts, he starts working at these big restaurants, which which emphasize creativity, but the food is sort of passionless. Right, right, and, you right, know, right. And you get that really heavy-handed message of, hey, you know, you got to cook with soul and passion. You know, it's the movie's filled with all sorts of platitudes like that. Like, like food is memories, I think they say at one point. And it's like... Mm. Really? Yeah, I, I guess. You know, I Food guess it is, is memories. I, I, I guess. But the interesting thing about it is that it's it's written by Stephen Knight. Right. Stephen Knight, the guy who did Locke, which we both like, I right. think. Uh, Dirty, uh, Dirty Pretty Things, Eastern Promises. He makes these really complicated movies, complex movies. And he goes and he makes a movie like this, which is sort of, you know, frivolous. And it's just like, eh. You know, so it's it's interesting that he would go and make a movie like this. I think. Well, I mean, I, I think if Oprah Winfrey and Steven Spielberg are going to throw some money behind something, <laughs> I mean, I'm not being funny. I'm no, just you're saying, right. You're I'm right. Saying, I'm, like, I'm, like I'm if laughing, they came I'm to you, true. they called you and said, "Hey, Travis, you know, we got this movie, man. You yeah. want to direct this for us?" You'd be like, "Absolutely." I, no, I'm laughing Why because not? it's true. And somebody asked me about it. It's like, well, do you think that he? Somebody asked me if do you think that he just kind of uh, if dialed if, it in? Well. I, I guess, but the way I think about, I look at it is Stephen Knight is such an accomplished writer. Right. I think he wrote it exactly as he intended to. And I think the mandate for this movie, and I think just the hiring of Lasse Hellstrom is, uh, confirms it, the, the mandate for this movie was to make it as inoffensive as possible. But make, you, it, make it a crowd pleaser. But, and that but, was it. But we only got a couple of minutes to go on this. Yeah, but, yeah. Let me, but let me just hit a key point here. Travis, if this movie was was released as a foreign language film and it was made with more of a European sensibility, and you took out kind of the American, the romanticism that that or the, the manipulation that Spielberg loves to employ in his films, <laughs> I honestly believe that this would be a much better film if it was a European production as opposed to a studio I'll, production. I'll be interested in seeing what it does when it finally does get released overseas. It hasn't been released out, uh, overseas yet, but I imagine I imagine it will probably do fairly well. And you know the irony, man. You know how we are. I always, you always hear me complain when they take European movies and then they remake them for American studios. This is one of the few times they should take a story that was made in America and remake it in Europe. And I believe it would be a better film because no, the sensibility, correct. I think, 
you you there's a way you can show what was what was shown in this film in a way that's more adult and more European that I think would have worked, do which you, is what this film needed. Do you think that this movie suffers from following up on Chef, which is still in theaters, by the way, and, and actually did really well? It's still doing well. I don't, do you think I don't, it suffers from that? That people are just kind of like, I've seen one fun food movie already. Do I really no, need to go see another? No, one? I don't. I don't think it suffers because of that. I think it suffers because of the execution and the storytelling. Because like we were talking about earlier, the whole message about cultures and assimilation. You got racism. You got envy you got you have a whole lot of stuff like in a potpourri not to no pun intended in this whole cinematic potpourri and i believe that it needs more i i, I keep going back to this because you and i both spend a lot of time watching foreign language films right, right this right. film right here this story i think would really would really probably been executed or more palatable for me if it was a european film that was mm -hmm. foreign language Versus you trying to shove it down my throat with some Spielberg, <laughs> Spielberg sprinkle and, and Oprah Winfrey. Ooh. This movie to me is like the, the the culinary version of like the best exotic marigold hotel. It's like it's like it's exactly. like it's like it's like, it's like exactly. yeah it's like yeah it's it's great it's, exactly it's, it's, it's fine you know it's it's totally pleasurable and, exactly and I can enjoy it and then you know somebody of a certain type will will really take to it. And I'm just gonna walk away from it and say, yeah, it was fine. Well, there was there was some folks that were at the screening, man, that really, you know, got into it yeah. and enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. but that's to be expected because a, the movie was free. <laughs> B, <laughs> I mean, you, uh, watch this for you out at there at home. This is not inside <laughs> baseball. What we're basically saying is that we go to screenings all year long, and there are multitudes of people that both of us have seen who will enjoy any film that is shown for free because it's free. Like that, like that guy who was dying at Blended. Oh my God, man! <laughs> Ooh, dude, but, <laughs> that guy will. Man, that guy will you don't get out much, do anything. you? <laughs> that guy will enjoy anything. Yeah, man. So, but, uh, so basically, but there was somebody who was who was clapping through Into the Storm the other day, and I was like, really? It's, it's just such a, just man, a lousy. It's, movie. it's free, man. I heard it was lousy. It's, it's lousy. Another movie. I'm, I'm, I'll wait on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, we're that we're in that kind of armpit time of the year right now. You know, there's this certain the, there's, there's this certain the periods. End, this is, the tail end of summer is usually pretty weak. Watch this: the end of January, the end of April, and the end of August. Boy, it, ooh, those are some bad times, man, to have movies <laughs> released. And if you don't believe me, just go back through and do some research. It's not new; it's what Hollywood does. Well, it's gonna but, get awesome next week. But, but we'll, you know we'll what, man? There was one thing we forgot to talk about today, but. I'm gonna What's see if that? we can try to squeeze it in the, at the end of the show. Okay. How how I was giving Warner Brothers the face palm all week when they announced that they were moving the Dark Knight to March. I mean, uh, Batman Superman to March. It's I was like, move. look, it was a great move by them. No, it's not. It it is, and I, I, but but we can't talk about it right now. We can yeah, we might try to squeeze it in at the end of the show, but I would really want to talk about that now. No, because I, have, I, I, I have a theory on that, especially one. now that we have different opinions. But it, okay, but anyway, oh, face let's, we got another movie to talk about here. Um, we're going to talk about a movie that you're apparently really really interested in talking about, and that's Calvary. Yeah. So let's go ahead and show a clip from that. I hope we don't get locked in here. We'll have to make love to keep warm. <laughs> I had a word there with Veronica, Jack. You're out of the house, were you? Is everything all right? Everything's fine. I mean, no, everything's not fine. Last on Sunday? With the shades and everything? Ah, oh, that. Yes, that. Are you laying into her or what's going on? That wasn't me, no. No, no, that's that black fella that she's been seeing. I mean, the current fella she's been seeing. Sorry, I didn't mean to be racist there. That was a slip of the tongue. You saying he beats her up? Don't quote me on it, but that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, she speaks in riddles half of the time. I can't make any sense out of her. I think she's bipolar. Or lactose intolerant. One of the two. I don't know where I am with her anymore, Father. And if I'm honest with you, I'm kind of glad to have her off my hands. Not even if this new fella's knocking her about. But you must have to do with me. What? <laughs> Not everyone can carry the weight of the world. All right, this movie here uh, is another one of the films that played at Sundance, and neither of us had an opportunity to check it out. right up your alley. No, but I'm saying that I didn't know. I, it was yeah, it played was at, at it Sundance. Was, it was at Sundance. It was one of the ones I had on my list of things to Wait see, and we just couldn't, I just couldn't get around to it. Before we start on this film, yeah. I, I, saw, I was over at uh, the Mosaic this afternoon. I saw the first trailer for Whiplash. 
Yeah, they showed a tra- they showed a trailer of it a couple weeks ago. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's a really good movie, by the way. Yeah, uh, Whiplash is one of those movies oh, uh, everybody's man. gonna want to keep an eye out for this fall. We oh really, man, we really ought to do a show that's about what's coming up this fall. Oh my god, actually, man. Whiplash we, fact, we is amazing. And or, Whipla- Whiplash is gonna be one of those movies to keep an eye out for. It's we saw it at Sundance. It was one of the first movies we saw at Sundance. Mm-hmm. It was it was and, uh, it was the first movie we saw. It was the opening you're night right. film. You're yeah. right, it was the first movie yeah. we saw at Sundance, and uh, it's. It's it's going to be something special, so everybody keep an eye out for Whiplash. But but let's talk a little bit about Cavalry, man. Mm-hmm. This this movie takes place over a course of a week, and mm-hmm. it opens with a uh, priest played by um, <laughs> Brendan Gleeson. And the it, opening line in the film is, I, I, "I tasted semen for the first time at the age of seven. Yeah, and that's the and, very and, first line. Of the and what's the name goes? He says, "You got nothing to say." It's a peculiar opening line. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so basically this this guy who we never see explains that uh, he was sexually abused by a priest for five years, twice a, was it twice a week or twice it, it a day? Was, it was like twice a day. Twice a day for five years. And since he cannot uh, take revenge on the priest who is now long dead, he decides that he will do the next best thing, which is to kill an innocent since he was violated as an innocent, and this time he chooses, he, he announces to said priest, played by Gleason, that in a week's time he will kill him on the beach. So the whole movie takes place every day as, you know, in a way he's putting his affairs in order without sort of really putting his affairs in order, if that makes any sense. He's not really attempting to do that, but that's kind of how the movie presents it. Yeah, yeah kind of like that. And, is, and, yeah. and I, I just thought as, as a person, you know, and you heard me saying off air that, you know, for people who don't know, I teach a film class. My church has an institute. And I said, this is not only a perfect film to show as a part of my monthly series, uh, but also, I wish I could get a copy of it for next semester because I would love to teach this movie because the whole aspect of faith, you know, uh, how the how parishioners felt let down by their faith, uh, the the you know the, the the various souls or people that he comes in contact yeah. with. I just think <laughs> this the, is the, a the peanut gallery. Oh, this is this this <laughs> film is re- this is a really <laughs> now we talked about like you weren't here a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about get on up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, on that show, we were talking about an electric performance by Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Brendan Gleeson, man. I'm telling you, I'm already starting to fill out <laughs> or at least have an Brendan idea Gleason. of my best actor ballots. Brendan this Gleason's guy is here. really good in this movie. Let's, he let's, really is. Yeah. Bre- let's, ahead, let's, 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 let's set up with this uh, the particulars of this movie first. This is written and directed by John Michael McDonough. This is a guy who did who worked with Gleason a couple years on ago on a, movie, on a movie called The Guard, uh-huh. which which is funny and it's the it's the highest grossing Irish comedy of all time, so they love it there. Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't really love it that like like it that much. I thought it was funny, but not necessarily deep. Uh, he's also the brother of Martin McDonough, the guy who did In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths. Uh-huh. So you get a sense that both of these brothers have a very dark and twisted mind already, right? Uh, four movies, all of them. Right. Are essentially really, really dark movies, and this is probably the darkest of the four. But I also think it's the best of the four. Um, I think this movie is this movie walks a really difficult balance because it's a comedy. It's very funny in a very twisted sort of way, but it's also the full of meaning. And this is a movie about a priest who. I, I didn't necessarily think he was trying to get his affairs in order. I think this is a priest who's trying to. Learn how to tend his flock while this thing is sort of looming over him. Right. And he's 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 and he's in this situation. He's in this small town where it seems like nobody respects him at all. And it's not necessarily his fault. It's just that the Catholic Church no longer has any credibility. And, and that's it. Because I yeah. you hit the nail right on the head. It's not that they didn't respect him, they didn't respect the institution he yeah. represented. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So you have all these people who make fun of him, they they really test his faith. I mean, they test him hard in this movie. They are just, they are killing this man, you know? And this is a guy who, you know, he's as sturdy as can be for most of this movie, but the arrival of his daughter, played by Kelly Riley, who has just tried to commit suicide. Uh, you have this other thing, uh, this 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 uh, pen, impending murder that he's not quite sure he believes is authentic or not. He doesn't know if he really believes this guy or not. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of trying to break that down in his head, whether he, this guy is, is a legitimate threat. All these things weigh on him to the point where even his face starts to get tested, gets shaken. And I think watching him kind of 
I, it seemed like he was really going through the phases of grief, you know, or the phases of acceptance when, like, when somebody gets a terminal diagnosis. Right. He's kind of going through those stages of, of kind of, of, uh, you know, I don't believe it, denial, and then there's this sort of, there's bargaining, there's acceptance. He's going through all those phases along the way. It's fascinating to watch, but there's also this mystery in the middle of it too. Right. Because you don't know, you don't watch for all, you don't know who the guy is. He, right. You don't he, know who's coming for right. him. He right. knows who it is, but he doesn't say. He won't say who it is. Right. He, you know, so you don't know who this character is who's coming after him. You assume it's one of the people he keeps seeing every day, but you don't know. Right. I mean, it is just, there's so many things going on in this movie that are just fascinating to me. But you know, but let me just jump in for a second. One of the things that I found to really be refreshing. And I'm not giving away the end of the movie, but I right. love oh, the what they do the with the ending. Else. The ending is, to me, kind of like brings it all home. So you watch this, and you know how sometimes we always talk, always talk about that we don't get a good payoff. Like, you know, if a movie yeah. doesn't give you a good, tough payoff, to get a good payoff, then the movie's like, eh, this movie's payoff at the end. I'm not talking about the, the, the scene, you know, the actual scene, but I'm talking about, like, the, the whole montage yeah. that it just kind of shows, which, which reminds me of, like, the final episode of The Wire, that mm -hmm. even though, you know, some of these characters may come and go, the situation always remains the same. You see these same people yeah. going through their different aspects, and then how he imprints on his own daughter. Right. That scene, that scene at the end was amazing. I yeah, love right. that final scene. In this I, movie. I agree with you, and, and, the, oh whole, and the whole thing is just really anchored by Brendan Gleeson here. He is so amazing here. Uh, he's he's this big hulking guy, and it seems like he's really playing this character as someone who has taken this burden on himself and is trying to and is literally trying to carry it. You know, it's like he's carrying the entire weight of the Catholic Church on his shoulders and trying to and trying to and trying to maintain and. It's it's an impossible burden to carry, and watching yeah. him suffer through that is, it's it's torturous in a way. You you kind of feel for this guy, and right. look, look, I'm not I'm not a person of faith at all, right. but I could feel for this man because I understood how devout he was and how inc how crucial it is to him. And watching it get get broken the way it is, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a movie that people need to check faith, out. Faith, sin. I mean, a lot of the the spiritual principles that I teach about mm. are all weaved throughout this film, which is why this is a film I definitely would love. I, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that it's going to come out. Well, yeah, I wish it came out later on, too, because I think that um, with, with, a, with a studio push, that this could have been the type of performance that they could really, he'd be on, he's on the edge right now. I don't, I don't think it's good enough to get him in because there's some other movies that are coming out over the course of the next four months mm -hmm. that'll really be in play. But this will be one of those performances, I think, when you get around early November that yeah. people will start looking at a, a, a person on the bubble. This is a performance on the bubble. And it depends on what critics groups do you know, or, or how critics groups, groups vote mm -hmm. uh, coming out the box because a lot of times that, that will lend some credibility uh, as we get into award season as well, which yeah. is ironic because we're thinking now we're less than four months away, man. From uh, from WAFCA announcing their awards and and probably about a month and four months and a we're, week away a from few, the Black Reel Award nomination. We're we're, we're only a few weeks away from the award season really kicking off. Oh, you're I mean, talking about like in uh, early September? Yeah, we're we're, yeah. we're only a few weeks away from the from the Oscar contending movies to start coming out. Um, well, but you know that's, is, that's fool's gold, though, man. Because you know, like last year, remember? <laughs> oh, ooh, uh, August Osage County. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, they're, 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 look, there's always a couple of dogs that those get, those that, movies that come out there. Watch this, Travis. <laughs> those movies are great until people see them. Yeah, right. There, there, there's, <laughs> there's always a. But you know what? Though a lot of those movies always play at festivals early, and you're like, hmm, that movie's not really Mandela. Right, like Mandela, <laughs> like Mandela, and, and 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 like August Osage County. I mean, we, when, we, when we saw it in, in, at the festival, we were like, eh, that's "What was what was another movie that came out early?" The Butler. The Butler was another one. No, but I was I was saying that was a September on movie that was uh, played in Toronto last year, and you heard all this buzz, and then when people say, saw it and went, yeah. mm. it, it just gets quiet. I mean, it, it gets quiet. I mean, you look at the last couple of years, movies like Devil's Knot or The Railway Man, movies that had Oscar buzz while they were in production. Right. Until <laughs> once they were done, people saw it. There's like, you just kind of didn't hear about them anymore. They just kind of went away. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you. I mean, I know, I know, you got like four more minutes left in this segment, man. But the we movie, can... the movie that I think that they really hope that it's good is Selma. Selma, they put that. that that's an Oscar contender. They, they they put it on Christmas Day. 
Martin Luther King. I mean, come on, man. Brad Pitt's got his got got Oprah Winfrey are producing it. So yeah. Yeah. well, let's, Oprah Winfrey didn't hope. really help the help the one hundred foot one hundred foot journey, but <laughs> she, she she helped herself in the Butler. She didn't help the movie though. Well, surprisingly, <laughs> I thought I thought last year she had a good shot to get a nomination for the Butler. Did but, she get nominated? Um, she didn't. Oh, oh no, she got left out. That's we were right. we were in Sundance, yeah, yeah, man, right. when that went down. No, she oh, did God, not get right. we were, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, you're right. Uh that movie, that's another one that had her her power behind it too and didn't help them out. So I don't know. Maybe we, we read too much into those things. But let's go let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and, and move on to the next movie now. Cause I want to actually get your opinion on that Warner Brothers thing. So we're gonna t- we're gonna talk about the next movie now. And this is one that we we we've been talking about Sundance. This is one that we saw in Sundance. This is uh, one of the last movies we saw. We talked right, about Whiplash being the first movie we saw. This is one, one right. of the last movies we saw. This is called The One I Love, and it is it is out <laughs> on it is out on demand right Ooh. now. And it comes in the theaters, I think, in the next two weeks, but you can get it now on demand. So let's talk about that. Let's go ahead and roll a clip of it first. Hey. Good morning, Hanson. Oh, well, I'm hungover. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it sounds like you need some breakfast. Not that we need to get back into it, um, but that was a little bit of a weird fight last night. I know. I don't really understand what happened, but I feel like maybe we just talk it up to like some bad pot alcohol <laughs> combo. <laughs> Put it behind us and not let it ruin the trip. Agreed. Totally. Cool. That being said, it was one of the weirder fights we've had. Like, Oh, my God. I know. Crazy, right? I mean, right? I, I still don't fully understand whether you were so drunk and stoned that you thought we had sex or were you just making a joke and it backfired? Honestly, I think it was just one of those things. You know? One of those things. No, I'm asking you, was it that you were drunk and stoned or was it playing a joke? Because I'm still confused what happened. I think the important thing is that, you know, we fought, we made up, we had a nice cuddle, it was a beautiful day. Sophie, what are you talking about? We had a fight and you stormed out and we didn't make up. Maybe are you okay? I'm fine. Are you okay? I'm Okay, Mr. Hangover. I think it's time for some food. Huh? Let's get something in your stomach. You're kind of freaking me out a little bit, Sophie. I gotta stop. Is that bacon? Yeah. You hate it when I eat bacon. <laughs> All right, now that's a clip from the one I love, uh, the Twilight movie. Zone, yeah, and a can, romantic you, comedy. You man. can hear a little bit of the, the what sounded like some Twilight Zone music there at the end. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, we can't see. This is the interesting thing about this movie, and you and I were trying to f- figure it out um, while the clip was playing. This is a movie, one of those movies that we don't want to give away too much about. So I'm, I'm I'm glad that clip was was a little bit longer than what we normally show because I think you got a pretty good taste of what it's about. <sighs> Without going too far into it. But what we can say is that this movie stars Mark Duplass, Elizabeth Moss. Gosh, she looks good in that scene. Um, Ted Danson is also in this movie. There are only three actors. It's only, it was only three movie. actors it's in this movie. Three. Three. Um, and they play, those two play, a couple who once had great passion for each other. It's now gone. He has he has uh, done something that has basically ruined her trust. In yeah, yes, no trust. No There's trust. No, no trust between them. So they go see this doctor uh, to kind of rebuild their relationship. Played by Ted Danson. Played by Ted Danson. And he recommends that they go away to this this weekend getaway that he's <laughs> used he's used hundreds of times with other couples. Sends them there to go and have this romantic weekend together. And they go, and all, everything seems to be going great at first. Uh, but as you saw in that clip, something's not quite right. So, something, something's a little off. They don't quite seem to be on the same page. And we're not going to tell you why they're not quite on the same page. You need to go see it for yourself. But there is a very Twilight Zone-esque oh, absolutely, man. thing and, about this movie. And, and, and as I told Travis, it's the kind of movie that I think that every couple in America America should go see this movie. And then if you immediately fight, after this movie, you, fight. you should have a discussion about the contents of this film 
and ask yourself the magical question I just asked Travis, oh, who told God. me, and I have no answer. <laughs> I said it's a loaded question. I won't touch it. Uh, you know what this movie? Oh, you, know what this movie you, know, you know what this movie reminded me of? What did it remind you? Because let's get it, let's get out there. We both like this movie a lot. I did. We both like this movie. I think it's one of the smartest relationship movie, comedies I've seen in a while. But you know what it reminded me a lot of? Ruby mm. Sparks. Which is interesting you would say that since I just saw What If today. And What If doesn't mm. come out until next week? No, it's out now. Oh, man. I, we should have talked What If. Zoe, I didn't Zoe, think you, would, you didn't tell me you'd seen it. Man, so I didn't she, know. she, you know, I Zoe remember Kazan. you tell awesome. me. I remember how much you told me you crushed on her oh, yeah. when you were watching that film. I understand it after watching her today. She is, it's something about her that it, it's, it, there's a certain sensibility about her, which Elizabeth Moss, Moss has it you know what, as well you know what in this it is? film. You know what it is? One, it, it's two things. One, it's it's a naturalism. They both seem like regular, normal people. And right. two, they, I mean, they do seem very approachable. They're beautiful and approachable. And yeah. I think I think a lot of I think that draws people to to mm. actors like them. So well, I, well, but Moss though, who I've been watching for years uh, on Mad Men. She's really good in this movie. I, th- I think that, uh, you know, Duplass and Moss have the most screen time. Matter of fact, they, the whole film is like them. 99% the screen The whole film time. is them. <laughs> they, but both the chemistry between the two of them and the, and the circumstances and situations that they have to deal with in this film, I think are handled exceptionally well. Like we were just talking about, uh, give you a contrast. We talked about the 100-foot journey early in the mm-hmm. show and how that wasn't executed as flawless, mm-hmm. flawless as it should have been. We talked about Calvary, where we thought that Gleason and the whole supporting cast and how that film comes together. Right, right. There is a certain, and, and I want people at home to really understand the, the phrase execution when I keep using it in films. Execution is, it's like, take for instance, when you watch a it really good film. It doesn't mean injecting film. poison into somebody's neck. No, but I'm just saying, die. like, when you watch a really good film and, like, the components start to come together, and that's everything. That's lead performance, supporting performance, direction, screenwriting, cinematography, music score, everything sort of kind of works together to give you, like, the ultimate filmmaking experience. This movie right here is much different from a film like Calvary, or it's much different from like a big blockbuster movie. It's a movie that's really intimate. It's a really personal story. Um, it has a twist that <laughs> will just blow your mind. Like, <laughs> right. and, and I think the questions oh, it, I man. think the questions it asks are really good questions about about couples because you know it's it's really something that deals with how people change and grow over time, right. and whether or not you look back on those things and you wonder, you know. What if I could? What if I could do something about it? You know. What right. if? What if? What if I could? What if I could? Uh, what if I, let's, what let's, if I can? Uh, what if use, I can do something about it? Let's use but my, not. But 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 everything be okay. Right. I mean, and it's 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 like when I said it's like Ruby Sparks. Ruby Sparks is about a guy who who has this 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 idea of the perfect girl. Right. You know, the perfect woman, and she actually comes to life. Right. Mm-hmm. But does being perfect make them appealing over the long haul or is it the imperfections that are what really draw you to them and i think that's one of the questions well, that, well, that, it definitely, that movie asks yeah. and this movie asks in very very clever ways it's, it's definitely the imperfections i would definitely agree with that i would agree because, with that too but yeah. but a lot of people don't see those yeah. things in the short term when they're actually in a relationship you right. know right. and these are the things that these both of these movies i think deal with very well so i mean i so, I, I can't say enough good things about this movie except so, just go see it. Right. So we can't really speak too much more about it because I don't want to give any of it away. I think there's going to be a pleasant surprise. And as I said, I think the, the post-film conversations are great. From one, from one. We got the five-minute board up, man. So let's get into our <laughs> for, let's get into our Warner Brothers thing. But go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, well I was going to say from one uh, romantic comedy to one fairly generic romantic comedy, what's your quick opinion of What If? I like What If. Okay. I really did. I, I like Kazan a whole lot in the like film, man. I, like um, I, I thought also. Daniel Radcliffe did a wonderful job as well. And it has enough quirky humor in it that I think it really works. You know, they're best friends, or his best friend, and his, and his girlfriend. It's unconventional. It was originally titled The F Word, by the way. Was it really? Sure. Yeah. It was, oh, well, they should have kept that title. The F Word meaning friend. Dana Radcliffe plays a guy who really wants to date Zoe Kazan, but uh, she's got a boyfriend, and he kind of ends up in the friend zone. And that's that's the basic point of it. I, I liked it, too. I liked it well enough. I, I, I kept feeling like there was something bigger or something better there because it, it really did sort of just embrace the romantic comedy genre and just kind of go with it. But I, but I, I, I think it's a, a pleasurable enough film. Um, but 
Uh, this Warner Brothers thing real quick. So wait a minute. So last week we ended the show with this Warner Brothers thing. You know, with the with the <laughs> yeah. clip that yeah. can't be the clip that yeah. can't be. It actually didn't get blocked for that reason, though. It, it, it was blocked for some <laughs> other reason, but uh, it's okay now. But uh, okay, so this this Warner Brothers thing. Um, th- what happened is Warner Brothers released like eleven release dates earlier this week, but the main thing was that they they moved Batman versus Superman up two months to March to March twenty fifth. I think it's a brilliant move for a few reasons. Uh, I'll say one, it's because it shows confidence in Zack Snyder because we know he's going to do Justice League immediately after. Um, it shows it shows that he's willing to take less post production because the movie's further ahead, further along. That's a good thing. It also puts them ahead of Marvel so that Warner Brothers now has the first uh, superhero movie of that year, which is a smart move also. And they have another superhero movie coming in August. So it was necessary to get some distance between those things. For those three reasons. I think it's a smart move. Why do you think it's stupid? I think it's stupid from the standpoint that historically, because when you just said the date, it, it, it makes it even worse now. If they would have moved it to the first week of March, which is where I thought they were moving it, mm-hmm. that's a week that films like 300, uh, 10,000 BC, Sucker Punch. There's been a whole plethora of movies that are like huge action movies that have opened in that weekend. Mm-hmm. Some have been successful, some have not. But it's a weekend that Hollywood has shown that that's a winning weekend. March 25th is absolutely not a winning weekend. I think it's a major mistake that if you were going to move the movie, it's not about it being the first superhero movie of 2016. You need you sh- If it were me, I would have pushed that movie into late July, early August and released it there when there's... What would you do with the second movie that's coming out that year, though? What's the second movie? They, they have another movie coming out in August. That's what I just said. They that's, have another movie coming out in August. Yeah, Warner Brothers does. That's why they had the movie. I think, I, I, okay, I, I still think it's a mistake. I yeah. think moving into March, man, March, as you know... Uh, as a film critic, and you've been doing this now for several years, or more than several years. Right. You know, Mar- January, February, and March are usually like the dead zone for movies. <laughs> I mean, they are, I mean, I'm not making this up. I'm laughing because he just turned it around, and we got three minutes now. That's Man, all. That's why this I'm is this is really a bad <laughs> time period. And then you're gonna release you know. this movie in March, so it's the end of March. And you're going to have a, a, a Batman, Superman. I like the way you say two, March with such venom. I say March with venom because <laughs> three three days to kill. Um, I mean, do you want but, me to uh, go okay, through the lineup okay, of okay, March okay. movies just no, no, this no, year? No, no, no. But I, I, this, I, this is I, a horrible idea. It's a bad month, but that's a movie that w- it, I don't think that will matter for a movie okay. like that. Not for a movie like that. For a movie like Three Days to Kill that most people are skeptical of anyway. But a movie like, like Batman vs. Superman that has probably have more heat behind it than anything else especially after comic-con i don't think that's going to matter i think it's going to be a good move for them to get as far away from marvel and and i had this discussion with somebody else today too if marvel had not moved like let's say that both they continued to play chicken and they both kept batman versus superman and captain america 3 on may 6 2016 both studios would have been morons Marvel too. I agree. They would have been idiots. I agree. So it's smart. I think it's smart for Warner Brothers to take the first step and just go ahead and move it, and and get and now they're going to be the first movie. They're going to get the first. They're going to get put their stamp on the year right off the bat, and they're going to get a chance to do it again just a few months later. I think that's all a smart right. Before thing. we get out of here, because right. Mike Phillips is giving me the finger again, I just want to go through <laughs> the movies that were released this March. Are you kidding? Three Hundred Rise of an Empire, Grand Budapest Hotel, Mister Peabody and Sherman. Uh, Need for Speed, Tyler Perry's A Single Mom's Club. Uh, <laughs> all those just, movies made money, by the way. Uh, I don't. I disagree. They made money. I don't, money. I don't whether think they all or, made money. Whether they this made, is whether not. Good or this not, is they not money. a good diverge. I mean, all of these movies. The, the, okay, they all made money. All right, man. I'm just telling you for the record, <laughs> it's a bad idea. Face palm to you, Warner Brothers. Good move, you Warner guys, Brothers. Man, whatever, man. You did the, you did the from right a, thing. From a Marvel dude. You did the right thing. All right, man. Mike Phillips is 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 over there shaking like a chicken. I don't know what the hell's going on. All right, we're out But I here. assume that that means that we got to shut it down. Episode 19 is in the books. Travis Hobson, take us home. We're out of here, y'all. <laughs> See y'all later. <laughs> oh, he's love with Travis. <laughs>